All right, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my mini library, if you will, of all my Bible versions that I have. So I'm going to start off with one of my favorites, which is the King James Bible. So this is the open Bible. I just purchased it a few days ago. I absolutely love this one. You're probably wondering why do I keep it in the box. I just like to protect it for as long as I can. I love this one, even though the font size is a little bit smaller than I like. This is a nine point font type, if you will. And uh, so it's 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 nice. I, the reason why I like it is because every book has an introduction. It has who the author is. Some key takeaways, what you can learn from this book, all this kind of stuff. I love that. My other versions, uh, my other King James Bible versions do not have commentary in it. So I decided to go out and buy one with commentary. That way you can get a little bit more history, a little bit more background. And uh, I like that. So that's that one. This one here is uh, another King James this is an older one, probably 40, 30, 40 years old. This is a NIV version right here. See, it's slightly worn. This here is the English Standard Version. And I've done a review of this Bible. This one I, I uh, got from the church. Our church has a few copies of these because someone donated uh, a bunch of these. So I asked one of my pastors for a copy of it. She gave it to me. And then this one here is this one I borrowed from my sister, Amy. If you're watching this, thank you for lending it to me. I will give it back to you. This is the Hebrew English Bible. If you open it up, half of it is in Hebrew. The other half is in English. And I believe they use the New American Standard Version side by side with the Hebrew. So I don't think it's a word for word translation. Uh, but they just matched it up with verses and chapters uh, accordingly. This one here is the contemporary English version. This is the Poverty and Justice Bible right there. They did a review of this one. Uh, this one, they, they basically created a version where they would actually highlight about 2,000 verses talking about poverty. This one here is the NRSV Updated Edition Gift Bible. This one here, let's just have a look at this. Let's have a gander. Let's have a gander at this one. Oh, all right, so this one, yeah. All right there, blue, nice, easy, very easy to open up, lays flat when you open it up, easy to carry to church. If you're going to read it, I probably won't read this. This one, I'll read highlights, but I'm not going to read the whole thing. The reason why I'm not reading any other version is because I don't have time. That's That would be my one advice to you is pick a version that you like and run with it. If it's the King James, that's awesome. I now consider you a born-again Christian. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I joke like that with my, my siblings my friends, every time I go to a Bible study, I'm like, does anyone else have the authorized version of the Bible? It's kind of a funny joke. But I love the King James Bible. Everybody that knows me knows that's all I talk about all day and all night. Uh, what else do we have? I have that one. This is cool. I think I talked about this one. This is the another King James. I... I got this one from my sister in the condition that I buy her a new King James Bible, giant print. So I bought her a brand new one, and then I took this one from her because this has a giant print. And I lost my giant print Bible on the highway. I put it on top of my bands, drove home from a Bible study, almost made it home. After 30 kilometers, I was like 500 meters away from my home and it fell off and then it got ran over a bunch of times luckily though one of my neighbors found a bible and went oh this looks like it's something important because i highlighted 
the snot out of it. And she looked it up on Facebook, found my wife, because my name was ripped off, but her name was still in my Bible. And uh, she said, I think someone lost their Bible. And she's like, yeah, that's my husband's. So I got it back. Fantastic. Thanks for that. And she was just like a block away, which is kind of funny how close I actually made it to home. My Bible. Uh, what else do we have here? We covered all that stuff. I think I talked about the New Life, uh, New Living Translation. I'm going to be doing a review of this one shortly. Another NIV. Oh, the message right here. This one here. This is the message. This is the New Testament uh, written by Eugene Peterson. This is a thought for thought translation if you will version if you will um because what eugene did and he wrote this one by himself it's almost like a novel really he read a chapter and then wrote his thoughts based on what he read and uh obviously he used uh did he use verses no he did he just used chapters but he didn't use verses so it's kind of like in conversation language if you will um, but I'm not a huge fan of it because it, it's missing a lot of key stuff uh, from the King James Bible, which is interesting. All of these versions really are derived from the King James Bible. How can I say that? Well, they're not going back to the original uh, Greek manuscripts, the original Hebrew manuscripts, because we don't have the original. All we have are copies, and even then, some of them are fragments. The only ones that are completed are basically, I believe there's two complete Bibles. Oh, what is the one? One is in Russia right now in a library, and that's the Leningrad Codex. And um, for some reason, it escapes me the other version that is in Israel right now. And part, it's partially burnt. There's some pages that are partially burnt but really that one is virtually identical to the leningrad codex so whenever you see um new versions of the bible they usually go to this reference here they'll usually go to the uh the biblia hebraica stuttgartia which is basically the leningrad codex in its entirety with masoretic notes in it if you will so that is the gold that people are seeking when they're trying to create a new version of the Bible. They use the King James Bible as a starting point because they have chapters and references. And then they use these uh, commentaries, if you will, because they have the Masoretic notes. And the Masoretics were great at putting notes in the margins. And over the years, that has become a real gem because that is the only way that you're going to understand what the original, if you will, is close to the original um, text of the Hebrew Bible would be, like the 39 books in the Old Testament. Um, that's as close as you're going to get because, again, we've had copies upon copies. But what's important is the, the notes and the columns. Those are so important. Because that's how you understand uh, vowels and how they're enunciated and what was the meaning behind using this word versus that word, all this kind of stuff. This is what the, pretty much any of the universal translators or versions if, you, versions, if you will, use. They don't go back to a Greek scroll and scroll through it and go, okay, this is this word here. No, they, they use... Uh, diagrams, pictures, photos, anything that they can get their hands on with commentary so that they can swap out words that they don't like from the King James Bible. And let's just be real, let's just be honest, because some of these versions don't like the archaic nature that they found in the King James Bible. They don't like the, the masculine terms, if you will. Uh, whenever uh, talks about, you know, when Paul says brothers, you know, uh, in some of his Pauline epistles, instead they will put brothers and sisters because they want it to be, they want it to feel more inclusive. So this is one of the reasons why I like the King James Bible, because again, 
William Tyndale did most of the heavy lifting. He was probably one of the first, if not only guys, that actually took the Greek, um, any of the Greek manuscripts that he had back in the day, because he was fluent in Greek, fluent in Hebrew, fluent in Latin, fluent in, uh, obviously, English and French as well. I think he knew like seven or eight languages. It's very rare for a Bible translator today to speak fluent Hebrew and fluent Greek and Latin and English and French and all this kind of stuff. It's very rare. I'm not saying it's impossible. It's very rare. Instead, what we have is people that are really good at studying books like the New Testament, Gracia, edited by Nestle and Arlan for the New Testament. This is a lot of these modern versions use this book as a reference as well again because of some of the notes and if the heavy lifting is done why recreate everything you're just going to mess everything up so the easiest thing is to use the king james bible translate it um, in modern english if you will and then call it your own because you've changed more than half of the bible into words that you use today now you can make this your own and then this is your resource this is your template you start with and you start making additions from these versions because you've moved away from the king james bible and now you go here and then you use these books as a reference to help you change out words if there's a word that you don't like tomorrow you can swap that word out and eventually it's going to get to a point this is my understanding that the King James Bible is going to read like day and night. People are going to be reading the message and they're going to go to the King James and they're going to be like, I don't understand the old English at all. Whereas if you do read the, the King James Bible today and you read it over and over again, you can actually go back to the 1600s and understand what was written back then especially you can even go like obviously you can go back 200 years because i shared in one of my videos a bible that my son-in-law had a king james bible and it was word for word exactly what i have in my king james bible which is maybe a year old so that's interesting in itself that's why i'm not a big fan of the modern translations modern versions if you will because they keep changing words and they keep to me it feels like they're dilate diluting it and the king james is good enough i i look at the king james bible as being the perfect word of god this is how i view it yes i'm one of these king james only people but i also understand where they're coming from from the other versions because i've done my history i've done my research if you will so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you got something out of this and you understand a little bit more why I read the King James Version Bible, why I love it, why I read it day and night. And uh, that's pretty much it for this video. If you are still watching this video, make sure and subscribe because really what I'm finding out in my stats is there's probably about 40, 50, 60 percent of the people that watch the video, they're probably watching it on the TV. Uh, they don't subscribe so if you if you wouldn't mind taking time go on your phone even if you're watching this on tv look up black swan revelations hit the subscribe button that helps me as well build my channel so i can make more videos like this do more bible reviews if there's a bible that you uh see that i don't have um, then let me know and if you want me to do a review on that Bible, I'll go out and get it and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, feel free to leave a comment as well. I appreciate all your comments. Hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully this is interesting to you. I will be reviewing a New Living Translation Bible uh, probably, I don't know if I'm going to be doing it today, probably tomorrow sometime. Anyways. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in another video. Bye for now.